Managing software on your PLCs or other edge devices can be a daunting task. Dealing with package management, deploying updated code, and dealing with multiple operating systems are all things that can make your job much more difficult. Luckily, container management systems such as Docker and Bellina help to ease this pain by allowing you to containerize your code and other applications and deploy and update seamlessly with a lot less hassle. Let's see how to get Bellina Engine's container management solution installed on a Phoenix Contact PLC Next controller. Since there is no native package management solution on the controller, this is a little more involved than using apt or yum on, say, an Ubuntu system. But luckily, the folks at Phoenix Contact have created instructions to make it simple. So let's take a look. Here I am in the PLC Next GitHub account with the Docker Getting Started repository. This will have most all of the resources you need to get Docker or Bellina Engine installed on your PLC Next. Now if we scroll down, we can see there are a few prereqs you're going to need to run everything as root. As you can see, I've already configured my root, but if you need to, you will first need to set a password for root as the controller does not have the root account password set out of the gate. So you'll want to run sudo pswd root and set your password. And once that's done, you can just either use su or su and dash, which will get you into the root account. The dash puts you into the home directory, which is where I'm going to work. Now, another thing you will definitely need to do is ensure that the date is correct. So if I run the date command, I can see it is actually correct for me. So if it's not correct for you, make sure you run this and set it before you continue or you will encounter errors. So now that we've done that, all we need to do is run this git clone command, which will pull down the necessary scripts from the repository. All right, if I run an ls, I can see that that directory is now there. So I will cd into that directory. Then I'm going to run this schmod plus x setup.sh. That will make setup.sh executable, and I'm going to execute it. As you can see, we have two options here. We've got Docker or Bellina Engine. Now, Docker is the most common container management software out there. Bellina Engine is a lot smaller, and since we're running on a PLC with limited resources, Bellina Engine is recommended. So I'm gonna go ahead and press one. We're not gonna bother with Docker Compose today. If you'd like, of course you can. So I'm not going to install that and just type no. All right, installation is successful. As you can see, there are a few things here that were already done for me since I've already run this. But as you can see, you can run this as many times as you need. If there's an update or something, this should not cause any issues to reinstall it. So go ahead and clear my screen. And now we have Bellina Engine installed. So let's actually get a container set up and running on the PLC. And for this example, we're going to use an Nginx container, which of course is a web server. So the first thing I'm going to do is run Bellina dash engine pull Nginx, and what this is going to do is pull down the Nginx image. As you can see, I already had mine, but you should see several running scripts there that will indicate that it's downloading. And then to see that the image is here, I can just type Bellina engine image ls. And I can see I have my image right here. So now what I'm going to do is cheat a little bit. And there might be some people who are a little mad about this solution. But I don't like typing Bellina Engine. I've been typing Docker for years. So odds are I'm going to make a thousand mistakes here if I keep trying to type Bellina Image. So I'm going to alias Docker to Bellina Engine. And that will ensure that I make far fewer mistakes than I would have trying to type Bellina Engine instead of Docker over and over. It's also easier to type. So now what I can do is I can run that Nginx container. Since the PLC Next is already accessing port 80, we're going to need to forward port 80 from Nginx to port 8080 on the PLC. And then what we're going to do is map a directory to it with a custom HTML file. So I'm going to run docker run. And again, this would be Bellina Engine if you didn't want to do the alias. docker run dash d for detached and p to set up the custom ports, 8080. And we're gonna map that to port 80 in the container. Then I'm going to create a mounted volume. 
And this is a named volume. So we're just going to call it Nginx, which will be set up within the default volumes directory, which we'll check out later. And then we're going to map that to USR share Nginx HTML within the Nginx container. Then I'll specify that image name, which was Nginx. All right, all set, everything is running. Let's go ahead and verify that. I will access the PLC on its default IP of 192.168.1.10.8080. Depending on which LAN port you're using, of course, this could be a different IP address. And we have the default Nginx page. Perfect. So now let's take a look at how we might want to customize that. So first what I'll do is take a look at that volume that we created. As you can see, we have a local volume named Nginx. So I can inspect that volume with Docker volume inspect Nginx. And I can see where the mount point is, right here. So if I copy that with a control C, I can CD into that directory. And you can see here that we have our index.html. So we'll just say mv index.html to index.html.bak. Then let's create a new HTML file. So vim index.html. And let's say something custom like hello world from PLC next. And again, I just use the I key to set myself up in insert mode. I'm going to hit escape and then colon WQ exclamation point, And that should save that. Then I'm going to refresh the page and perfect. Hello world from PLC next. So now let's take a look at how to find that container and delete it. I'm just going to return back to my home directory to clean up the screen a little. So we can run a Docker PS. And as you can see, we've got our container name here. It's quite a mouthful. To remove the container, I'll run docker rm-f, and we'll use that container name, youthful underscore grothindiek. And the container is now deleted. Now there's another great way to delete that container. I'll just restart it real quick. We can also run docker rm-f, and then docker ps-a-q, the Q will remove anything else except for the container IDs. So if I do that, that will remove all containers no matter what. So then what I want to do is remove that image. So if I run docker image ls, we can see that image is there. I can run docker rmi, and then run docker image ls-q, and that will remove all images. And then we've still got our volume, so I can run docker volume rm docker volume ls-q. And that removes all of the volumes. All right, so congratulations. You've got your PLC Next controller set up to run Docker. And we've learned a couple really nice tricks along the way. Thanks for watching.